Hi everybody! Welcome to my talk today about evolution that carries actually the same title as one of the most famous biology books all over the human history that was written in the 19th century by Charles Darwin on the origin of evolution in which Charles Darwin explained evolution and the unity of life. Charles Darwin said in his book that actually all living forms and living organisms living on earth are actually related by a unity in life. They all have a common ancestor from the beginning from which all other organisms descended and over time and by the change in environments they uh, actually spread to different environments so they accumulated different adaptations to different life conditions which actually outputs the different varieties of species of organisms. But he says that actually all organisms are brothers and they have all, all a unity in life dissenting with the modification from a common ancestor. He said that highly similar organisms like for instance a cat and a tiger are actually having their common ancestor very near in time, maybe a small or a few million, millions of years ago. But other uh, organisms or creatures that are less similar or have a few similarities among them are having their common ancestor remotely in time, maybe millions or even billions of years ago. But actually, all over the human history, not all scientists and philosophers believed in evolution. In BCE, an important Greek philosopher, Aristotle, said that actually evolution is not possible. Evolution is not a fact. He said in his classification system, in which he classified all organisms, that actually there are no evolutionary links between all organisms, and that he classified each stage in his classification system that he called the nature of the scale, in which each stage has or includes only one life form or only one type of living organism. And by increasing the number of stages, you increase the complexity of the living organism. But they are not evolution evolved from each other, and they didn't evolve in the past or even in the future. Actually, Aristotle said that because he actually believes with the, the religious beliefs or just agrees with the religious beliefs that say that God created each living form and organism separately with a perfect way. So, since God is almighty, all-wise, and all-powerful, he created each creature with a specific job, with the most favorable form or creation ever. So, creatures just don't need evolution from each other to be suitable to life. Actually, later on, in the 18th and 19th century, many people also believed that evolution is not a fact. They agreed with the thoughts that actually Aristotle thought of. In the 19th century, however, many scientists began to believe in evolution. One of them is actually Charles Darwin, a scientist who published his book in the 19th century on the origin of species. And actually, Charles Darwin was not the first scientist to believe in evolution, but he was the first and the pioneer biologist to, believe, to examine or to um, illustrate the mechanisms of evolution correctly. He was the first one to do that. In his book, he said that the mechanism of evolution by which organisms evolve is called nature selection. To explain to you nature selection, as Darwin explained in his book, I have to give you an example. For instance, if there is an environment, okay, that environment is having warm weather and growing grass, and there is a population of deer living on that environment since so long ago. Actually, this population of deer has genetic variations, like us humans. We are one species, humans or homo sapiens, but we have still some genetic variations. Some are uh, having colored eyes, some are not. We are having curly hairs, some others are having smooth, smooth hair. There are also shapes of noses and so. So genetic variations among the populations don't mean that there is uh, some species in the population. It's one population at the end. So the same case is actually with the deers. They are having genetic variations. Some of them are having thicker fur and, and stronger teeth than the other. Others are having wider, uh, wider eyes than the other. There are other genetic variations. However, by time, the nature changes. Catastrophes come. And actually, the weather is more colder and harsher now. And the green grass died. And it was replaced by a cactus plant that is more favorable to bear the new cold conditions. However, so not all members of the population suited to those new life conditions, so most of the members of the population of deers died out. However, the nature selected specific traits for which its deer holders will survive the next generation. The, the nature selected 
deers with thick fur and uh, strong teeth in order to remain and to revive gener generation again in a generation of deers that actually descended with modification from the previous deer generation. That's what we call evolution by natural selection. However, actually that's the same case that Darwin found in his trip to Galapagos Islands with a group of birds called the finches. By examining their high similarities of different types of species of finch birds, he actually found that or inferred that finch birds are having their common ancestor very near in time, maybe millions of years ago, due to their high similarities. But he uh, observed a very strange thing. Uh, the finch population actually are uh, um, spirited or radiated to different environments or natures in, on the island of Galapagos, on one island of Galapagos series of islands, in which they adapted to different uh, natures or, uh, or environments. For instance, some environments needed the short beaks of the finch birds to be longer, and some other environments needed the short beaks to be thinner or more accurate. So what happened uh, for the first environment that needed or its life conditions needed the finch birds to be long and peaked, not short beaked, and actually finch birds are short peaked by nature by nature, they are naturally short to peaked. So in the first environment, all short beaked finches died. Only the birds or finch birds that have nearly long beaks lived and they made a new generation that is all long beaked. That's evolution by natural selection. The same happened in that environment that is full of insects that reproduce widely. So insect will be the new diet for the new for the finches. So the finches at that at that type of environment only all died because of their uh, short beaks that were incapable of eating insects. But only semi acute peaked birds lived and made a new generation that we can say that nature selected it. So it's an evolution by nature selection. However, you need to know that actually natural selection as an evolution mechanism doesn't work on members of a population. So members don't evolve, but the whole population does. For instance, the short big birds all died by the new conditions. They didn't just develop their beaks into longer ones or thinner ones just like that, by magic. No, everything is science. Actually, the members didn't evolve, they died. By over time, we can say that the whole population evolved by natural selection, where all members died and only capable members lived and were selected later by the environment. So no members evolved, it's just the whole population. I need also to tell you a, a story about a very important concept that we know today, which is called homology. Homology means that not all highly similar organisms are by priority she are sharing a revolutionary history. Not all high similar organisms are having their common ancestor very near in time millions of years ago. Homology says that there are some creatures or organisms that are having their high similarities due to same adaptive techniques which they made in response to similar environments in which they lived. So, for instance, the Australian and American moles are so similar in the physical characters from outside. But by examining their fossils and their genomes, scientists didn't find any similarities in their genomes or fossils. So they actually inferred that evolution is not the cause of their high similarities. Homology is the cause. Homology is when the Australian mole and the American moles lived in different environments, but they are similar environments in the life conditions. So over time and over millions of years, they adapted with a similar technique to the similar environments making the similar characters from outside, but this is not due to evolution, but due to homology. Finally, I need to tell you also a very important evolutionary concept today. It's evolution-religion conflict. Today, actually, uh, we know that uh, Darwin mentioned in his book, on The Origin of Speeches, that by studying and observing uh, fossils and organisms, he inferred that humans, which, he, uh, which were called Homo sapiens, all the humans are descended with modification from apes. Apes are just like chimps or chimpanzees or, or chimpanzees or they are just like monks, gorillas. They are something like that. Okay. Uh, Darwin said that actually he inferred the relation between humans, Homo sapiens, and chimps or apes that humans are descended with modification from apes. That actually conflicts and severely with our heaven religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. 
all believe that Adam, the first human ever, was created by God with the most favorable and wonderful image ever over all other creatures. And Adam descended to earth from which all the human population came. So that's, conflict, that's conflicting with what Darwin said about the human descent from, from apes, not from a, a, a wonderful, beautiful human father that we believe is Adam. So, to actually uh, figure out the reason for this conflict, we have actually to think of theories and the facts and the differences between them. After all, it is still Darwin's theory, not Darwin's fact. Evolution is a fact. Darwin said about it and give evidence and we today actually compare fossils and genomes and technologies that wasn't available at Darwin's time. So today we, we compare technologies like genomes and, and so and we have made sure that actually evolution is a fact. But evolutionary relationships among organisms and life forms is not a fact. It's just like probability and there is no certainty. So I can say that hum humans are descended with modification from apes 100%. It's not possible. Actually, you are comparing living organisms with extinct organisms. There is some clues are not found. There are some complexity in the problem. So you can't say that you are sure 100% that humans are descended from apes. Actually, Darwin revealed that in his book. He said, some things are missing in my book. He said, actually, there is no uh, certainty in my book uh, in some conditions and there is uncertainty in my works. So Darwin himself revealed the truth of science. He said that actually evolution is a fact, but the evolutionary links and finding them with 100% efficiency is not possible until now. So to sum up, our variety of living organisms fabrication today is an output of common ancestry among organisms. However, you need also to remember and always do that, that actually the relationships and the, to find who is the father of who and who is the ancestor of who is just carrying a little mystery, a little uncertainty. Science is a, is a power to harness the knowledge, but we don't have to forget that the actual knowledge, the actual power is just knowledge and not the science itself. Science is just a means. So that's all about evolution uh, from my point of view and what I thought it, it may carry you. So I hope you got it. I was uh, Meza Muhammad Sayyid Salama, 17 years old from Stem Takalia High School. Thank you and see you in other talks.